a very pragmatic approach it has been an approach of engagement so for example look at how it is moving the economy in the area of tourism and it has had to take some bold decisions they they've gotten investors into the hotel sector and the government has had to acquire some property on the beach and quite frankly um, while the property owner is a good but I would like to say friend of mine is a family that I know we had a long history going back the fact of the matter is that the economy is in a critical stage and unless we take some immediate urgent steps to revitalize this economy Grenada is going deep deep trouble okay um, and so what has the government done it has been forced to use the acquisition um, laws in the country in order to get that hotel property into the hands of an investor that can do something with it we need foreign direct investment into this economy to move and money is scarce money is exceedingly scarce so when you see an opportunity the other distinction between this government and the end is that the government has a leadership that has energy the last government has an inept leadership that had absolutely no idea. The government was essentially run by NAS. And he had a very conservative fiscal approach, got nothing done. Right? And the, the, the technocratic elite that he had surrounding him were all self-centered persons. Right? They never had a record of achievement. They never produced anything. They essentially lived off the gratis of the state. That's why I refer to them as the parasitic technocracy. Technocracy, people of technocrats um, who delivered nothing to working people right we have a different approach and um, this is why I'm elated I think that the government is on the right path I mean look at the energy expended in just trying to resuscitate health that is a sector that's in deep crisis the government didn't sit there twiddling its thumbs right it even started a telethon going on the television and asking ordinary citizens pledge of five dollars or ten dollars we need to buy the medicine the government moved immediately to set up the national health insurance advisory body so that we can get national health insurance in place to address the case of of health in this country and and the deter deteriorated health infrastructure that we now have right so i'm saying all of these initiatives show a government that is sensitive and has an idea on how to get out it may or may not succeed but it has an it idea it has an idea of idea. how we're going to tackle him oh, <laughs> and that to let's us is important at, let's look at um recently we had the imf on the ground and they met with not just governments um did they meet with the they met with the trade, they union. the trade yes. unions they met with everybody coming out of that there's the whole issue of structural adjustments and having to do a number of things that would you know generate um the revenue in the economy one of it one some of the things that were highlighted is the our our what you may call it our the link people as it relates to the payment of of taxes and that sort of thing well unfortunately now, uh, let me let me uh, just continue with this now we have um government lowering the tax threshold tra the tax threshold that is going to of course put some monies back into the economy but from your perspective and the workers perspective how is that going to affect people right, who are already whose income isn't keeping up with, with well cost of yes living? yes it's a difficult yeah. one it's mm -hmm. a difficult one already calling on the workers to make more sacrifices and one may say that's un unfortunate but let me put it to you this way Sitting here, I learned that my home is on fire. So I rush from here and go to Tantine and realize that the fire is contained in the kitchen. Hasn't taken the rest of the house. It's really a blaze and not the house is burning. I mean, the house is on fire, but the fire hasn't yet spread. Do I spend the time arguing with my wife of this fire? How did it happen? Man, you take a bucket and you what, dash what, it how, on that. What, what, what happens here, <laughs> yeah. right? I can tell you I would not even take off my jacket. I would immediately grab a bucket, as you say, and try to put the fire out. In the meantime, I may lose my jacket. I may even get scorched and burnt to save the rest of the house. I'm using this analogy to point out that the situation, look, we cannot, 40% and growing unemployment is unsustainable. The very workers, we have, a, have our estimate that we've done roughly in our union is that family incomes have declined by one-third 
because there are less people in the family working. Either the wife has lost her job in a hotel or in cable and wireless or in one of the banks or the husband who's a construction worker and was working with CCC and who worked for most of the, th all of the 13 years under the last NNP government but worked for none of the years under NDC's out of work. Can't find any job because there's no construction with family incomes falling. If the situation continues, the worker that is working will become under even more stress because his kids would have finished secondary school. Possibly they would have finished tertiary education. Like the nurses, you're qualified, but you just can't be employed. Any way you take it, we have to make a sacrifice. I prefer to make a targeted sacrifice that is reasoned, and I could see some light at the end of the tunnel. I would not make a blind sacrifice. Let's be clear on this. In other words, if somebody killed out a plan and asked me for some money, I won't give it to them. Right? So a sacrifice is necessary. It's as difficult as it is for the worker. And I can see talking a plan about, unfolding. Talking about, talking about sacrifices, though, um, with the lowering of the tax threshold, and I'm asking you that, would you have preferred to see also a reduction in the in, in the rate, and even with the persons that are going to, as it relates to severance pay, well, that uh, talking about sacrifice again, mm -hmm. I mean, 30 is quite high. Would you have perhaps advocated that rather than 30%, they lower that contribution to perhaps 10%? No, be, simply, because, been, uh -huh. simply because severance pay is not an ongoing payment it's a one-off pay you get once that's mm -hmm. it yeah but it's if, sacrifice. No, 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 no no yes <laughs> but you are losing your job you are losing your job there's no sustainable or identifiable or guaranteed source of income for you and your family you've lost your job work for the last 25 years and you receive a notice that at the end of November you will no longer be working and there is a good possibility that uh, a considerable amount of these persons would either become self-employed, invest in self -employed small businesses, doing what? or but some of them will find a job the next day. Doing so I'm what? saying talking about no, 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 sacrifice no, no. here. Doing, mm -hmm. doing what? That, I'm saying to you, the, 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 the labor market is inelastic. You have a labor market that is shrinking. Jobs are difficult to find. Right? When you have these tier of managerial personal types who come onto the market, where are they going to work? There are no growing businesses in Grenada. There's no new investment in Grenada. They're few and far between. There are no new business. So getting an alternative job, so that summer money that you have there will at least act as a buffer for the four months, the five months, the six months that it would take for you to get a job. No. And the higher up you are on the economic ladder, in other words, the more skilled you So you may decide, look, let me try my luck in the Trinidad labor market and see if I can find a job. That involves an airline ticket. It involves having to probably stay in a hotel uh, while you pursue trying to get a job. It may go several countries you may have to go to. You know, so, and I'm saying the, the, the severance pay is a one-off lump sum money that you get. It's not, it's not ongoing salary, right? Whereas your ink, when you lower the threshold and then lowering the threshold and then lowering the rate may, 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 may all balance out. So at the end of the day, you're no better off. Six or four and a half. Yeah, no, 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 and you're, no, you're no better off. What I'm saying to you is, it's something that I like. Personally, it is something that will put pressure on working people. And on the last occasion, when the idea of re lowering the threshold was proffered, I opposed it. The situation now is different because back then, the government showed no inclination that it was capable of handling the situation. They had no programmatic or pa policy platform that showed that they were taking any active steps. The government basically was selling off the family silver in order to pay nothing. Right now, we can see that there's an active program to create jobs. CCC is back. What, to what right? level? CCC is back. So we are seeing something happening in the construction sector, right? This government, facing the same economic difficulties, is moving along to do some things in tourism, right? They have some investors. We had an investor, a Grenadian investor, right? Who, all right, we may have disagreed with how he came by the title to the property on the Grand Anse Beach or the Hamiltons, right? But the government did nothing other than go and take back the... Um, the title deed take back the freehold now they're in the court 
facing a suit of 40 something million dollars so Tillman has the free hold but what would you do with it nothing is happening there at the Grand Beach rather than if you worked out an arrangement as Peter David was attempting to do with these people and to say look we were not happy in the way in which you came free hold we, we thought you got nothing for it but let us see how quickly we can put a five-star hotel down and work with the investor to ensure that that hotel goes but now we have you see when you have a peasant mentality it's a mentality of a peasant so so you you, you have the land you are 75 years of age you could you're doing nothing with it but you have it true you can't run a country that way mistake was made originally and there's arguments back and forth whether or not Hamilton was given the title deed for nothing and was a picture and blah 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 if that mistake was made fine you move beyond the mistake the objective is to get economic activity on that part of the Grand Dance Beach with a five-star hotel that increases our room stock that can attract more airlines that can provide more employment that can bring people into Grenada who have the money that they can spend, not backpack and tourism. Right? So what we were imprisoned by an archaic mentality of a peasant, right? That compounded the problem that we now face. And that's the difficulty that we face here. So I am saying, while I while I don't like the idea, but if we don't make this sacrifice now. The situation gets worse. More people will be out of work. More businesses would be co would collapse if we don't grow this economy. So for the very workers who are working, their jobs will be coming. Secure. And if they lose their jobs, they will lose their jobs in an economy that has basically collapsed and died. Mm -hmm. And this is why I make the point here. What we are faced with in Grenada, this is not the NNP that's facing this issue, you know. It is not the government. And we tend to see government in a personality. This is Grenada that is facing this. And look at, the, look at the approach of the Conference of Churches. They have gotten on board. In other words, the church realized, yes, they must look after the so-called spirituality, but the spirit can't exist outside of a certain physical reality. And they must also pay some attention to that. Yes? So they're saying, if we have an IMF program, we need to protect the poor. We need to protect the vulnerable. We need to protect people with low incomes yes but all of us and the professional strata must be made to pay their taxes because they don't the professional strata don't pay their taxes by and large and make us be put in place to ensure look we in, we are in this together it is not them and us why have they not been paying their taxes and how have they been able to get away with not paying their taxes for all of these years <laughs> they're, they're typical they're human beings and if people see an advantage and they interpret that as an advantage, they go after it. So I think they underreport the income. That's much my general view from all that I've heard from the taxing people. And we seem not to have the um, to deal with it because you see, Grenada is a very paternal society. We're a very small society. I know you, you know me. We probably drink together, we lime together. I'm in a tax office, but I'm in your house every Sunday morning playing cards. I see your point. <laughs> uh, Mr. Humphrey, <laughs> so. very profound discussions indeed, but unfortunately, we, are, we have run out of time. But I will give you uh, just a minute or two just to wrap up the discussion. And um, obvious that you are pretty much um, comfortable with what this, this administration is doing. You think that they have a plan. Um, you think you are, you, you are you are able to trust them and you're able to have that confidence because they're not just going about in the wind but they are, they seem to have yeah, something see, a structure about you see, them. Mm -hmm. I I have said before that I am concerned about Project Grenada. And anything that contributes to Project Grenada mm -hmm. will have my unqualified support. I'm not ideological on the issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not opportunist on the issue. Anything that has Project Grenada in mind will have my full support. And this is about Project Grenada. This is not about Keith Mitchell or this is not about Tillman Thomas or Nazem Burke. They have their political places and issues. This is about Project Grenada. How do we make the community in which I live better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All you right. know what? I did indicate that we were running out of time, but I was just advised that our next guest is running a little bit late. So okay. we do have some time to chat. In terms <clears throat> of a person who would, persons who would have felt that your relationship with the last administration, the <clears throat> former administration, um, went sour and that perhaps um, you would have uh, changed and come uh, is supporting this administration and it would have been very critical how has that affected your 